Four months ago, I bought a pantograph from my fresh little aquarium. When I bought them, I didn't know what I was getting into. Not because I didn't do research, there's just not a lot of information about these crabs. So for weeks, I gathered as much information about panther crabs as I could find, that coupled with daily observations of my crab, who we're going to call Mr. Krabs. You can't name him that! Hmm? You can't name him that! Why not? Is Mr. Krabs the only name you can think of for a crab? Okay, we're not going to call him Mr. Krabs. Instead, his name is Eugene. Eugene Krabs. After weeks of studying Eugene, today I would like to share 10 important things to know about panther crabs. Panther crabs originate from a lake called Lake Montano, located in the Sulawesi island of Indonesia. Now let's see if I could give you a better look. Oops, okay, that's not right. Okay, let's go here. Nice. They can be found under logs and in roots within a lake and surrounding bodies of water. The lake has a pH of 7.4 and the average temperature is between 80 to 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, I don't know if we're supposed to be seeing all of this. The panther crab is one of the few crabs that are fully aquatic, meaning that you don't have to turn your tank into a paludarium to successfully keep them. Most freshwater crabs spend most of their time on land and occasionally take a dip in the water. Well, it's the opposite with panther crabs. Within the three months of keeping Eugene, he showed no interest in the life above the water, most likely because I keep him in a 75 gallon aquarium, which is huge from his perspective. Now I do imagine that if I kept him in a smaller tank, like a 20 gallon or smaller, he may not be content with his space and may try to expand his domain by moving upward. Even though these crabs are small, I noticed that mine explored the entirety of his aquarium and as I mentioned he does live in a pretty large aquarium. So because these crabs are so adventurous, I think it's best to give them as much underwater space as possible so that they don't feel the need to climb out of the tank to look for more real estate. I think a 3 foot aquarium or larger is enough for your crab to be content being fully aquatic. If you do have a smaller aquarium, be sure just to keep a lid or create a piece of land for your crab to come out. Panther crabs can grow up to 4 to 5 inches and that's including their legs, so they're not big crabs. I've read that they can live up to 10 years, but I can't find anyone who's kept them for that long to confirm it. Honestly, I doubt that they can live for that long because most inverts are short lived, so a freshwater crab living up to 10 years would be pretty much like immortality, so maybe they were talking about 10 dog years. Eugene is a rather handsome crab with an orange body and brown spots and he has a brown head. They typically range in color from yellow to orange and sometimes brown as their base color with brown or black spots. So juvenile panther crabs are hard to sex, but as they mature, if you look underneath them, it's not too difficult to distinguish males from females. Besides that, males and females look identical. I did not check Eugene's bottom, so I pretty much assumed his gender. But soon I will be removing him from this aquarium, so I'll use that opportunity to tell what he really is. Can you keep multiple panther crabs in the same tank? When you see panther crabs in a fish store, they will most likely be a group coexisting in the same tank. However, based on Eugene's behavior and some of the experiences of panther crab keepers that I read online, if you leave the store with just two crabs, eventually you'll end up with one, or if you're lucky, you'll end up with one and a half based on how merciful the more dominant crab is. Based on research, I say that you have to treat these crabs the same way you treat aggressive fish. You can keep one as the only crab in the tank, or you can keep a colony of six or more and that way the crabs will build a hierarchy among each other and divide aggression equally. Obviously, if you do choose a colony, you'll need a decent sized tank. I say something at least four feet long is sufficient. The problem with keeping just two or three crabs is that the most dominant crabs will attack the weaker until eventually you only have one crab left. Now, when you have a colony, individual crabs have a better chance at gaining or transferring dominance, thus allowing them to coexist with each other much better. The exception to this rule is if you have a huge tank like a five foot tank or bigger, then you could keep two or three and they should have enough territory to separate and not have any conflict. Eugene's biggest personality trait is that he's a savage scavenger. So he will eat anything that he could catch, whether it be fish or invertebrate. That being said, you want to avoid keeping stationary or slow moving creatures like catfish or snails. Besides that, most other fish and shrimp should do well unless they're like blind. I keep mine with African cichlids and they coexist pretty well together. Obviously, avoid fish that can eat your crab, like 75% of the fish in my other aquariums. Now, as I mentioned, panther crabs are scavengers. 
so they will literally eat anything that they could catch. In my tank, when I feed the fish, the fish get very excited. That excitement alerts the crab, and he comes reaching for whatever he could get his claws on. Mine loves to eat pellets, blood worms. He'll even eat hair algae, and I'm sure if he finds a weak or injured fish, he'll include them in the menu as well. Most people who keep panther crabs will agree that they are shy and mainly nocturnal. That was my experience for the first month with Eugene. However, I soon redesigned this aquarium and added all the rocks that you see here. The rocks provide a cover and protection on just about all sides of the tank, and as a result, Eugene was 10 times more active. He comes out every feeding, and every now and then I'll catch him just exploring the tank. So activity level is based on how safe your crab feels inside the tank, and the more hideouts that you have, the safer the crab will feel. Now when Eugene is active, his normal behavior includes scavenging, which makes up about 75% of his activity. He'll just dig through the substrate looking for crumbs or any algae or anything he could put inside his mouth. The other 25% of his activity that I noticed is just him hiking around an aquarium, exploring, looking for homes and stuff like that. Now he is more active at night and I'm pretty sure he does the same exact stuff that he does during the daytime, but with a little bit more confidence. Now every few weeks I do notice that he disappears and that's because he is molten, he is an invertebrate, so he will shed his scale, not his scales, he will shed his shell, and he'll be gone for like three or four days, and then he'll be back to his normal routine. Now I have some unfortunate news for Eugene. Within the next few hours, his tank will be demolished. The good news is that he will be going into a new aquarium that's almost twice the size of his current tank. In his new tank, Eugene will meet creatures that he never knew existed. He will make friends and enemies, as he starts the next chapter of his life. Until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. As always, feel free to leave any comments, likes, and suggestions in the comment section below, and subscribe for more. Catch you on the next one.